NFL rumors coming at you guys presented by Manscaped. Head over to manscaped.com slash chat. It's right there. 20% off and free shipping on all of their great men's grooming products. Let's dive into those rumors now, beginning with a Zach Ertz trade. Maybe. So NFL Network, Mike Silver, says that multiple teams have called about Zach Ertz and a trade could happen in the coming days. Now, things are dicey for Ertz in Philadelphia because Dallas Goddard looked really good this past year and he outplayed Zach Ertz. Ertz, meanwhile, has a nearly $12.5 million cap hit for this upcoming season. Unfortunately for Philadelphia, the Eagles are only going to save about $5 million with a trade or a release. There's still a decent amount of money owed to Zach Ertz that a different team would have to pay him, by the way. That's kind of an issue for Philadelphia. And oftentimes, folks, when, when there is a report that team is receiving trade calls about player, means they actually aren't. And it means they're trying to leak that, hey, we desperately want to move this guy. Someone come make us an offer, any offer. And I wonder if that's what's going on here with Zach Ertz. I know the Seahawks and Colts have been linked to Ertz, but with the way his contract is set up, I, th I think it's a little bit more likely that Ertz actually ends up just getting cut by Philadelphia. A trade is possible. We will see if that happens, but the clock is ticking for Philadelphia. They got to be salary cap compliant by the first day of the new league year coming up on March 17th. So because of that, something's going to happen with Zach Ertz, and it's going to happen very soon. So make your predictions then on what you think it's going to end up being. What will the Eagles do? Type T for trade, and they'll find a partner. Or type in C for, you know what, they're just going to cut him. He'll go somewhere else in the end. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. T for trade, C for cut. And as those votes are coming in, make sure you guys are subscribed. We have free daily NFL videos on the draft, free agency, trades, news, rumors, mailbags, everything you could possibly want, all in one spot. So if you want to stay updated, Hit that big red button and subscribe. That way you know what's going on in what could be a crazy NFL offseason. Let's go to Sam Darnold and a potential trade for the New York Jets. The Jets, at per Albert Breer, they're still taking trade calls. They're in no rush, though. Breer says eight teams have called. And what the Jets' plan is going to be is as Trey Lance and Zach Wilson and Justin Fields, as their pro days come this month in March, they're going to fully scout those top prospects. And once they've done their evaluations, they will make a decision on who they want at quarterback. If they want the heavily linked Zach Wilson, if they want Trey Lance, or if they want Justin Fields, they will simply take one of those guys at number two and move on from Sam Darnold. Frankly, I think a trade is in the best interest for both parties. If you're the Jets, haven't, haven't you seen enough from Sam Darnold? Even though he's young, even though he was a, a former high, early top five draft pick, the guy we've seen in his NFL career has simply not been good. This is not franchise quarterback play. And yes, the situation for Darnold has not been good either. And if you're a team desperate outside the top 10 looking for a quarterback, Darnold might make sense to you. If you're the Jets, though, go with one of the younger unknown guys. If you're a team like one of these three, that Albert Breer mentions as a pot potential fit, well, that might make more sense for you. The Bears, as we know, are desperate to find a quarterback. Washington doesn't have a starter. The Niners have been linked to Darnold since they appear to be uncertain with the future of one Jimmy Grappolo. All three of these teams are unlikely to be in that Lance Fields-Wilson range. So at that point, Darnold might make sense for them. The Bears are intriguing because, well, if you were to franchise tag A-Rob and then Give Donald a, a quarterback, that'd be the best playmaker Donald's ever had. That, that could work, and if you're desperate enough, you might give up a top 50 pick, which I think the Jets would love to get for Sam Darnold. So make your predictions for me now. In fact, this question is going to be the pinned comment on today's video. Where do you think Sam Darnold's going to play in 2021? Let's move now to Kenny Galladay. Adam Schefter says the Lions might not actually use the franchise tag on. The early reports, the expectation from me and many others was, 
you know what? The Lions will probably franchise tag Galladay. Yeah, he missed most of this year with injuries, and he wants a lot of money. But when healthy, he's a legit number one receiver. The Lions have nobody at receiver. They did just sign Tyrell Williams, but that's about it. He's your Tyrell or he's your Marvin Jones replacement. You need a, a number one. Galladay, meanwhile, wants a lot of money, which I think makes a lot of sense because he's a good football player. But you might be concerned about paying him that because of the injuries. Only five games this past year. But in 2019, he was awesome. 65 grabs, over 1,000 yards, 11 touchdowns, won some people some fantasy leagues as well. I like Galladay. I think he's a really good football player. If I'm the Lions... Unless I'm rebuilding, in which case I'd probably try to tag and then trade him, which I think makes more sense, I'm not going to let Galladay leave for a future comp pick. I don't think that's in their best interest. But maybe they feel differently, and maybe you guys feel differently as well. So what do you want to do with Kenny Galladay? Type K for keep or type in L for let leave. Now, today's show is made possible by Manscaped. You can head over to manscaped.com slash chat. When you use that URL, it'll get you two things. Number one, 20% off on all their products, everything. So you're saving some money. And you can save some extra money by getting their free shipping when you use that URL, manscaped.com slash chat. It will be in the comments and in the description as well. You can get all of their great men's grooming products, including the Lawn Mower 3.0. It's the best men's grooming tool for, you know, the nether regions, if you will. Keep it nice and shaved down there because let's be honest, if it's gross and hairy, not going to smell that great. No one wants to put their head down there. It's gross. Use M Manscaped's Lawn Mower 3.0. You can get the perfect package, for example, which gets you the Lawn Mower plus uh, these comfortable boxers, a traveling case, some ball toner, ball conditioner, all kinds of stuff. It's a great product at a great price at manscaped.com slash chat. You can get the perfect package, save 20% off, and get free shipping there in the process. Once again, folks, you'll put that link both in the comments and in the description. That way, all you have to do is go click shop and figure out what you want to get today. Moving now to Ryan Fitzpatrick, where things are interesting here. Um, so John Clayton had said that it looks like Ryan Fitzpatrick was going to retire. That the Broncos, we'll get to here in a second, made some contact, but the Fitz, Fitz is going to retire. Then today, Ian Rapport comes out and says, nope, he's going to play this year. He's planning on it, and there will be a market for his interest. So two different reports, and frankly, I'm a lot more inclined to go with Rappaport because the Clayton one doesn't make sense to me. Fitzpatrick can still be a strong option as a veteran stopgap quarterback who can help mentor somebody younger, which is why I think he makes perfect sense for a team like the Denver Broncos unless he wants to try and start somewhere with maybe a Washington Patriots, for example. Here was Clayton's quote. Fitzpatrick looks like he's going to retire. The Broncos did make some contact with him, which technically you cannot do, but it's tampering, so it's fine. Uh, he's been with eight teams for a long time. Looks like he's going to be out of the mix. So the Denver part, I, I am inclined to believe from Clayton. I don't think he's going to retire, though. I don't Look, Fitzpatrick is not a franchise quarterback anymore. We know that. We know that he is no longer going to be the guy that's going to carry you to the Super Bowl or whatever or be anything other than a stopgap for the time being. But you might be able to have enough success to where if your coaching staff's in some trouble, he might be just good enough to buy you time to go find your future guy. Look, I think in terms of the top free agent quarterbacks, it's clearly Dak Prescott. And then I guess it's Fitz, because the other options are uh, Jameis Winston, who's kind of a, much of a gunslinger as Fitzpatrick is, Andy Dalton, who's like fine, but he's just a backup type. Mitchell Trubisky is not that good. Cam Newton was once an MVP, but he looked kind of washed this year for the Patriots. To Rod Taylor, Jacoby Brissett, two solid backups, but they're more in the Dalton range than anything. And then C.J. Beathard and Colt McCoy, those guys aren't, aren't good football players. Not someone you're like, oh, yeah, now we're set at starter. Of the guys who could start, Fitzpatrick is intriguing. Now, I do think he wants to find a role where he can start. I don't think he wants to go full-fledged Josh McCown and just mentor a young guy and move on and go be a coach at some point. I think he still wants to play. 
So with that in mind, make your prediction for me. Where do you think that Ryan Fitzpatrick will sign in 2021? Is it back with the Dolphins? Is it a team like the Denver Broncos? Is it somebody else altogether? Make your predictions for me in the comment section where you think Ryan Fitzpatrick will sign. The NFL franchise tag line is supposed to be on March 9th. However, because there is still no salary cap number set, the NFL, much like they did last year, could choose to delay the franchise tag deadline. Now, last year, it was because there was no CBA, there was no collective bargaining agreement. But right now, because the cap does impact some players' tags, well, they might delay it a little bit. So because there's no cap set, and the deadline's supposed to be Tuesday, tomorrow, that, that deadline might get pushed back, which would buy teams like uh, the Dallas Cowboys some time to work out a long-term deal. Denver already tagged Justin Simmons, but they, they could make some sense there. The Packers and Aaron Jones, all these teams that could be in the market for adding or, or tagging a player are going to buy themselves some extra time. Now, I do want to make, make one note here on the salary cap in general. The NFL has zero reason to not make the cap flat because if you're an organizational team and you're trying to win football games, your best bet, unless you've got God's cap, there's like five teams out there, your best bet to winning th this year is a higher salary cap because that means you don't have to cut so many players. So if the NFL and the ownership pushes for a lower cap, which I think they are, I believe it's because the owners – are getting a little bit greedy and want to pocket a little bit more money. The TV money's coming. It's going to explode the salary cap. Don't let it dip this year. Keep it flat. Borrow from the future if you need to. But that's the route I would go if I ran the NFL. 